So I found that blue crayon late last night and I finished the red, white, and blue stripes behind Mickey Mouse. And then I decided to finish Mickey Mouse today along with the postage stamp on the outside. I haven't decided which one I'm going to give the mail girl. I'll probably decide on that tomorrow. I just thought it would be nice to give a little bit of artwork to cheer everybody up, you know? I've given some to the neighbor, given some to other friends and family, so why not the mail girl too? So uh, with it being a postage stamp, I thought that's something she could adore for years to come. Anyway, it is time for a book review, and this book is going to get a 20, and Teresa Southwick is definitely one of my favorite authors. And when I read this back, well, first I love the title of this book, Crazy for Loving You, Cowboy at Heart, Teresa Southwick. Now, if you all remember the, the song by Patsy Cline, Crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy. Crazy for feeling so blue. I knew you love me as long as you wanted, and then someday you need me for somebody new. That song, remember? Well, in there, there is a, a, there's a part of that song that goes, I'm crazy for crying. I'm crazy for crying. And I'm crazy for loving you. Okay, well... With that being said, as you can tell, it's got lots of paper clips, so let me put the readers on. My old age is showing. And we're going to get to reading here, y'all. Cowboy Crazy. When she became a love-struck teenager, Taylor Stevens had bared her soul to Mitch Rafferty. But instead of sweeping her into his arms... The tortured rebel with the bad boy blue eyes told her she kissed like a little girl. Mortif mortified, Taylor shoved Mitch into the pool. Cowboy boots and all. Now the tables have turned. Mitch couldn't believe his eyes from scrawny kid to a stunning woman. Taylor sure had grown up and Mitch was itching to kiss her again. But the contrary cowgirl swore she'd been crazy for ever loving him. So this lonesome drifter would just have to stick around. Destiny Texas long enough to prove her wrong. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, we're going to do a little bit of background about the author right now before we start in. Uh, Teresa Southwick lives with her husband in Las Vegas, the city that reinvents itself every day. An avid fan of romance novels, she's delighted to be living out her dream of writing for Harlequin. And I gotta say, this has been one of the most adventurous, fun reads that I have read in a while. Page 9. Taylor's first thought was stunned disbelief that her sister was dumb enough to let a guy like Mitch go. Her second, she was going to go for to hell for being so happy that he was no longer spoken for. Meaning that her sister broke up with him. Moving forward. Okay, that was just the preface. Now we're on chapter 1 at page 13. This is now 10 years later. Mitch Rafferty was back in town and was going to see any minute now how Taylor Stevens looked out living her her living room window wondering if he could be an, on time as newly as the appointed commissioner of the high school rodeo association it was her job to find it was his job to find a site for the state championships it was an event she desperately wanted when she found out Mitch was the man who held the future in his hands she'd been stunned even now she wondered with a god 
which of the gods she defended and how she could make amends. She needed to pit him to pick her, or rather the ranch, the Circle S. She had a lot riding on this, but if history repeated itself, she was in a lot of trouble. The sound of a car engine drifted to her over the hum of the central air conditioning in the house. She cracked the shutter in the front room enough to peek out. The late model extended cab pickup, crunching rocks and dirt as it came to a halt in a circular driveway that was unfamiliar. Her stomach dropped and he was here. Ever since finding out Mitch was back, she'd been a nervous as small kitten up a big tree, and not only because he could impact her life over and over, and repeated to herself that she didn't care about him anymore, and she was a big girl now, and he couldn't hurt her, tell that to her hammering heart. She turned away and took a deep breath as she brushed her hands down her khaki slacks, then adjusted the belt at the same time, making sure her buttercup yellow blouse was neatly tucked in, no point in meeting him wearing the dirty jeans and work shirt she'd worn to muck out the stalls this morning. She might be from the country, but she's pretty cleaned up, pretty good. Wanted to put up her best foot, boot forward. There was a knock on the door. She took a deep breath, and she counted to ten. Heaven forbid she looked too anxious. Here goes nothing, she said, opening the door wide. Page 15. Her heart stopped. Mitch was a decade older, but he looked even better than she remembered. His eyes were still that bad boy blue and hinted of mischief. His hair was that same sandy brown and his well-formed nose crooked enough to keep him from being too perfect. That angular face and square jaw were just somehow more rugged. Why did she find that so incredibly appealing? Right there on her front porch stood Mitch Rafferty, the same man who had two-stepped on her tender 14-year-old heart. Shock sanded ten years away, feelings like they were every big and deep and painful as that night engulfed her again. She wished that she didn't remember, but she did. All too clearly. The humiliation of their last encounter washed over her countless times since it had been the standard by which all she judged all disasters. She said way too much, followed by a kiss that even a decade in between made her cheeks burn now. She couldn't seem to fo form a coherent thought, let alone get a word past the Texas-sized lump in her throat. He, rec he looked at her for several moments before recognition jumped into gaze. Taylor? Page 16. Mitch, it's been a long time. No kidding. Takes several. T it had taken him several moments to know her, but she'd been a skinny kid the last time he'd seen her. He told her she kissed like a little girl. If there was any cosmic justice, she would not blush at that thought. She was a grown woman now, not the kid who pushed him into the pool. The memory had dominated her recollections ever since learning that he was the new commissioner. Would he hold it against her? Even worse, would he recall how she bared her soul. Moving forward. Okay, page 27. She couldn't help laughing, and he joined her, rewind ten years to before everything had gone wrong. That was how she felt, putty in his hands. For just an instant, just until she shut it down cold, she didn't ever want to go there again. She was loving, she was through loving men who loved someone else meaning she still thinks that he has feelings for her sister. Page 29. There was something about being back in Destiny, more specifically back in this room with Taylor Stevens. He'd have been telling the truth when he had said that he'd hardly known her at first. She had changed in all the right places. Her right, light brown hair was shoulder length and her layers were streaked with gold highlights. Brown eyes full of spirit intelligence that challenged him. She'd been just the kid that last time he'd seen her that night. The longer he stood in the kitchen back on the circle as talking to Jen's little sister, the more he remembered fingers, feelings washed over him. Page 30. Frustration, yearning, anger that burned into rage and feelings of helplessness that he rode like a broken-in saddle. Page 36. Life isn't fair, and your folks don't much care about fair. They make up their minds up, and nothing short of an act of God will change it. They pretty much assume the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, and my family tree didn't have any fruit except for me, or roots, either for that matter. Your dad reminded me of that on a pretty regular basis. 
I know, but I can tell you're not bitter, she said. Then she bit off her lip to a stifle a smile. Of course not. The corners of his mouth turned up and the movement felt rush the movement felt rusty. He'd forgotten how she could do that, even at fourteen. She was even better now. In just a few words she pointed out what an idiot he was making of himself, and she made him smile at the same time. Aww. Okay, that was one of the all moments. Okay, page 47. She's wondering if she's going to get that high school rodeo to be at her ranch because she needs this. She needs some help for her ranch because her ranch has got a mortgage and she's got to pay the mortgage, so she needs publicity to make it a dude ranch, a working dude ranch. And she's wondering, but will she get that? If he's the commissioner, will he choose the other ranch? Page 47. If he waited for revenge, time had supplied him with the perfect means. All he had to do was hold the rodeo somewhere else. Her plan wouldn't necessarily fail, but it would take a lot longer to succeed. Time was her enemy. The added boost of publicity right out of the chute would give her a leg up on the win. Maybe she could sidestep his question. What are you looking for on a ro rodeo site, she asked. He thumbed his black hat higher on his forehead. Lots of land, first off, he said, page 48. There has to be room for vehicle parking, and that includes horse trailers and campers. You're not too far off Interstate 20, so that's a plus. What else? Space for portable grandstands, food vendors, free standing corral big enough for the vent. I've got that, she pointed out the areas encircling by the pipe fencing, three arenas, and one is long enough for a barrel racing, goat, ta goat tying, and pole bending events. I notice. What I want to know is why. Why what, she asked. Why you have three. What do you need th th them for, and why is the dirt soft and churned up? He met her gaze and asked again, what have you got up your sleeve? You make it sound like I'm trying to pull a fast one. I didn't mean to. He turned away from Coral and leaned back against the fence, folding his arm over a pretty impressive chest. To distract him herself from his masculine pose, Taylor took the brunt of the full-on stare. Then she stepped off the fence and stood up straight. I'm getting ready to open up the ranch to visitors. Page 49. You don't mean a dude ranch, he said, looking as shocked as sh when he'd gone backward into the pool. She nodded. B&B, &B, Texas style. The arenas are for activities, riding, roping. If a greenhorn takes a tumble, soft dirt is more forgiving. Why? Because it's softer, and he shook his head. I meant, why are you altering the operation from a working ranch? It still will be a working ranch, as long as there's breath in my body. I'll do that kind of work. But I think it will add to the charm. This is something I've always wanted to do. Take people f with harried lifestyles and slow them down. That what's, Show them what silence is like. I apologize. I can't talk tonight. Give them a taste of traditional Western lifestyle. And... And she didn't pretend to misunderstand anyone in Destiny's could tell him if he asked. I needed to do something not so closely tied to agriculture. Drought, beef, and feed prices, all that can make a financial difference. Why is that so important now? I've got a mortgage. Since when, he frowned. I thought your dad owned the land outright. Did something happen? And to read that part, you're going to have to read the book. Next paperclip, page 53. It's a small paragraph, this one. It was a cruel and twisted cosmic joke that she found herself and her future dependent on the man who had no love lost for her family, and every reason to stand back and watch her fall flat on her face. She wasn't the one who had hurt him, but she had a feeling that wouldn't matter. She suspected Mitch didn't have a lot of experience with forgiveness, but it had been ten years. Everyone changed. Even a mixed-up kid nicknamed Riff Rat Rafferty. That's Mitch's nickname. Moving forward. Page 64. Her mouth turned up slightly. Yeah, a lot of things, but no one ever accused me of being stupid. If that unfortunate incident by the pool had slipped your mind... It wouldn't be very bright to remind you now, would it? Page 65. I suppose not, he agreed. So what's your plan? Revenge or a single benevolent act to show that we've buried the hatches? 
hands on her hips. Mitch stood by the pool, thinking her father was gone. He hadn't had the will to speak ill of him. He had no feelings for Jen, so no wish to get even, but Taylor had never done anything to hurt him. He deserved that cooling off in the pool ten years ago, and he found the idea of doing anything that would harm her bothered him. A lot. She would be one of the most affected by this decision. With an effort, he pushed the thoughts away. No way he was going soft. I'm here to find a rodeo site, that's all. Your ranch meets the criteria, but I have one more place to check out. Grady O'Connor spread. But he's the sheriff. I didn't even know he was interested. Acting sheriff, he said he would agree to hold the event there, if necessary. He hooked his thumbs in his pockets. If the circle S is the best, you'll get the nod. If not, he let the words hang between them. I guess you got to go back the 10 years and I'm going to give you a little history between what happened between uh, Mitch and Jen, the sister. They were pretty hot and heavy and a relationship, but yet Jen cheated with Zach. Mitch caught Jen and Zach cheating in the act. So he's storming back towards the house and little... Taylor at the time is telling him, you know, how much she's expressing, hey, what's wrong? Talk to me like we always do. We've always been friends. You can tell me anything. And he's like trying to tell her, no, I'm going to hang out with my friends. And then all of a sudden she's wanting to get his attention. She lays one on him, tells him that she loves him. And then he tells her that she kisses like a little girl. So she pushes him in the pool. So that gives you a little background. Okay, page 104. Trouble was, that was what, and he had had enough for a lifetime. Starting with his mother walking out, Taylor was a class act. Now that she wasn't a kid, he doubted she'd be interested in a guy like him, no matter how much time had passed. Page 105. Moving forward. Big hunk of book there. Page 154. Why is it so hard to believe that you are an attractive woman? He opened a cupboard and then closed it again when he saw it contained plates. They're in the hutch in the dining room, she said, turning to get something to put wine in. She opened the glass door and retrieved two long stem crystal glasses, then joined him in the kitchen, keeping the bar between them. He poured the Chardonnay into each one. He met her gaze. You didn't answer my question. Why don't you believe you're attractive? She didn't have any wish to deny it. My sister was a tough act to follow. It's pretty hard to compete with perfection, and after my engagement went bust, I figured it was time to get real, to stop trying, she shrugged. I'm just me, and that's just the way it is. He handed her one of the glasses. You're not a quitter. Page 155. I don't believe that that's quitting, she shot back, but for argument's sake, how would you know? I just do. The girl I remember from that night ten years ago didn't jer give up on a jerk who lashed out and tried to push her away. As I recall, I was the one doing the pushing. She s took a sip from her glass and let the smooth, cool liquid slide down her throat. He grinned. That's what I mean. You don't take any gruff. Look, Mitch, I don't want to talk about it. Or, I don't want to talk about me. Sorry. I do. Taylor watched him take a drink. A lot of the guys would look like a sissy holding a delicate crystal glass instead of a long-necked bottle of beer, but Mitch Rafferty had more masculinity in his pinky than most guys. He oozed macho and was so darn good-looking, her heart hammered painfully in her chest. "'What about me?' she asked, hoping she wouldn't regret that question. "'You said you loved me that night.' She wished he hadn't had that, said that at the same time she was taking a drink. The wine went down the wrong way, and she started to cough at the burning. Mitch was around the counter in three strides and patting her on the back. You okay, he asked, holding her by the shoulders. This is page 156. Fine, she said, eyes watering. Look, Mitch, there's nothing I would rather do for, than forget about that night. Me too, but I can't. I was hoping we could get it out in the open, discuss it, then put it away for good. Did you mean that, what you said? I was 14 years old. Of course I meant it, she took a deep breath. But you were right. I like that. About what? I was just a kid, a skinny one at that. You were right, too. That's always good, she said, flashing him a grin. About what? 
You said I should wait and you would show me. I was angry. I didn't mean. He settle, settled his knuckle under her chin and raised it, forcing her to meet his gaze. You're beautiful when you walk down Main Street, Destiny. I bet you give guys whiplash. You're exaggerating. I don't. You're a woman now, Taylor. You're not a skinny little girl. He shook his head in wonder and admiration. Lady, you showed me big time. And that's page 157. It's nice to see a little bit of the banter between the two that they still can chat as friends, reminisce over old times, and especially the time where she embarrassed herself and uh, told him that she loved him and he treated her like a kid. Moving forward. Page 165. By social, do you mean then intensity jumped into his blue eyes? Taylor backed up a step. What if I do? Do I have to tell you that you're playing with fire? I know how to play. I survived it, didn't I? Never mind me. The point is that... The point is nothing. She tucked a strand of hair behind her ear and the wind blew across her face. You're not my bodyguard. You're not my big brother. We have no connection and you have no responsibility towards me at all. And none of her words washed away her wish that it was different. Taylor, listen to me. She shook her head. You're leaving, Mitch. When this championship are finished, you're out of here. Why should I listen to you? I appreciate the fact that you're concerned about me. I really do. But after you're gone, what difference does it make? You'll do whatever it is you do, and I'll take care of my life, my ranch, my roots. Just because I'm here doesn't mean I won't care about you. Just because I'm not here does not mean I won't care about you and worry about you. It's not necessary, she shrugged and hoped it was casual, that he could hear her heart thrumping, thrumping, thumping, as page 166, in her chest, but she couldn't help but smile. If you'd been this nice ten years ago, Destiny would have had to put out that help so wanted sign for a b new local bad boy. He stared at her for several moments, then started to laugh. He shook his head. You're a pistol, Taylor Stevens. Take one to know one, you Mitch Rafferty. You never really knew me, Taylor, he said, and he started to walk toward the house. Mitch, she waited until he stopped, then glanced over her shoulder. I knew you then. I know you now. You're not Riff Raff. You're a nice man. A good man, and it's about time you stop trying to hide that fact. A vicious lie, and I will deny it to anyone who asks. The sight of his broad back built a sigh up inside her, but she managed to hold it back until there was no way he could hear her. I am in so much trouble, she said to herself. Page 174, 175. Taylor had just thanked him for not holding a grudge about what had happened ten years ago. There was no point. He didn't care anymore. Not about Jen. But Jen had been his first and most difficult lesson. Her message to him. He wasn't good enough for a woman he cared about to love him back. He wanted to believe he was a fair man. But damn it all, Taylor was Jen's sister. He said it to himself. The fruit didn't fall far from the tree. Why should he believe she was any different? Her father hadn't liked him. Mitch was an abandoned kid from the wrong side of the tracks, and the man who had found ways to remind him hold it against him like father, like daughters. After leaving Destiny, he'd become a big money winner on the pro rodeo circuit, and the buckle bunnies had lined up like competitors waiting for their shot. The lesson women had hated or loved him and basically judged him not for who he was, but his status. All except Taylor. Only she'd been a girl then, but she was a woman now, and every painful lesson he'd learn, ever learned came roaring back. Page 177. He recalled that night. Fourteen-year-old Taylor had tried to tag along with him and his friends to take to the lake. He brushed her off, and she'd been all horns and rattles and fit to be tied. As things turned out, it was probably the best decision he'd ever made. She was so young, she could have been the one. But she wasn't. And the next night, Jen had dumped him and... Oh, I thought it was... Pardon me. I thought she dumped him beforehand. And the next night, Jen had dumped him. He lashed out at Taylor, the only one who'd ever given him anything but friendship. And she said she loved him. Do you always hurt the ones you love? There was no doubt she was a woman worth caring about. But love? Wasn't sure he knew what that word meant. Sure, he had feelings for her. But putting a label on them just wasn't something he wanted to risk. As most men don't, that word commitment 
makes him run for the hills. Page 182. What would he say if he knew Jen was coming back next week for the rodeo week? Was she coming because she knew Mitch was here? Maybe it was for the best that they see each other again. Since he returned, she had a sense of forces from the past working on the present to make amends. Was she losing her mind? Next thing she knew, she'd start humming the theme from the Twilight Zone. Maybe it was time for Mitch and Jen to get together, the way it should have been ten years ago. Taylor was fine about it. Only someone truly gifted in the art of idiocy would let her heart be broken by the same man twice, so no skin off her nose. Definitely for the best. And when pigs flew, she might almost believe that. But there was no point in telling him. Jen would be here tomorrow. Page 218, 219, and on. Taylor was sure she loved Mitch, and he wanted his her sister. And she'd been wrong. The heartache wasn't the same as she'd known ten years ago. It was ten times worse. Somehow she would have to find a way to survive. Jen met her gaze. Love deeply and passionately. You might get hurt, but it's the only way to live life completely. Taylor would have have to learn to live life a lot less completely. You should take your own advice, big sister. We're talking about you. I had my chance at happiness, and even knowing what I know now, I wouldn't change marrying Zach. A love like that only comes along once life is too short to miss opportunities. This is page 219. Life is too short, Taylor agreed, hoping that they would make her sister drop the subject. Not only that, great love and great achievements involve great risk. You're on the threshold of both. Jen took her cosmetic bag into the bathroom. I think I'll freshen up before we go to the rodeo. Taylor shook her head when she was alone. Leave it to Jen to go from lofty ideals to the basic of great skin care. She respected her sister a great deal, but no way would she tell Mitch how she felt, knowing for sure how he felt about Jen. For a moment, anger welled up in her. Jen had given him up. She'd handed her heart to another man and walked away. A fierce desire to fight for the man she loved grew inside Taylor. Then she remembered the last time she'd done that, humiliation and heartache, and it had been her reward. It was about time she learned from her mistakes, because she didn't think she could handle being rejected again. After seeing her sister in Mitch's arm, a ten of bucking bowls couldn't convince her to bear her soul to him again. Ten years ago, Jen was everything he wanted. And I'm just me. Taylor whispered to an empty room. That was page 220. Now, as you can see, she's reading too much into it, but yet Mitch hasn't really cleared the air, so therefore she's thinking that Mitch's intentions are towards her sister Jen and that she's not good enough. And if, then Jen's telling her, you know what, I'm not really interested in Mitch. Maybe you should go after him, but yet she's not taking it like that. She's reading her sister the wrong way. So, a lot of mixed signals, a lot of wrong signals. Are they going to get ironed out? Moving forward. Page 231. In fact, there's something weird about the rodeo this year. What do you mean? Don't you feel it? Sort of deja vu as if the past is catching up? Taylor had felt it. She and Mitch had talked about it. Still, she asked, why do you say that? Maggie brushed a curl away from her small face and tucked them behind her ears. Since I agreed to sell the rodeo t-shirts along with my own stock, I've been able to sit here and watch the crowd. So? But Taylor heard, heard the nerves in her friend's tone. I feel as if I'm seeing faces from the past. Like who? Jack Riley. Jack's here? Taylor asked. No, the other woman shook vehemently as her head as if sheer force or will could keep up from being told so. I'm sure it wasn't him, but it's as if Mitch is coming back and made it all us think about ten years ago. A troubled expression pulled from her eyebrows together and puckered her forehead. Go ahead. Tell me I'm crazy. This is page 232. Certifiable, Taylor said, struggling to keep from grinning. Any minute, eerie stalker music will come over the PA system. Can the resident slasher be far behind? Watch your back, Mags. The other woman held up her hand in a sheepish, sheepish smile, turned up the corners of her mouth. Okay, I get the point, but tell me you haven't looked at people in a crowd and spotted someone for a dead ringer for a person you know, only it wasn't them. Never happened to me, Taylor said, shaking her head. Okay, be that way, but I've had that feeling tonight, and I keep seeing this guy. 
You mean the one talking to the girls? Maggie shook her head. Another guy. He's bigger and broader, more filled out, but he's got the same black hair and blue eyes as Jack Riley. Couldn't it just be wishful thinking? Did you have a crush on Jack that no one knew about? Taylor suggested. Page 233. Uh, no way, Maggie said, flatly denying it. My parents forbade me to see Wild Jack. Do I have idiot written on my forehead? Taylor pretended to closely study her friend's small, heart-shaped face. Nope, and even if it was, the curls would hide it. Curls I passed on to my daughter, her friend said, ruefully tucking her hair behind her ears. In spite of her close friendship with the other women, Maggie had never named Faith's father, at least not to Taylor, but she knew if the man's name had passed Maggie's lips, it would be all over destiny. The little girl had been conceived a decade ago, probably right around the championships. After all these years, Maggie and Faith were still a package deal, a family. She'd come a long way from a teenage mother to a confident businesswoman who supported her daughter without help from anyone. Now it really didn't matter who had fathered Faith, but Taylor couldn't help but be curious. How can you be sure that this guy isn't Jack? Taylor wanted to know. It's been ten years. Or what? Why would he come back now? Why after all this time? Because Mitch is back. Page 234. So he's a cosmic catalyst? Taylor smiled, but her gaze settled on her sister in the bleachers. A catalyst for calamity. Jin is back, too, she said quietly. Maggie's gaze swung back to the bleachers. Yeah, and look how close Grady is sitting to her. Taylor had noticed, knowing Mitch, he would have said something about that. I guess he's as close as sequins on an evening dress, Taylor commented, using her friend's analogy as she tried to joke. That's not exactly the analogy I would use in reference to a hunk like Grady O'Connor, but if the body language is anything to go by, he's doing surveillance on Jen as well as the gruesome threesome. Any closer than they'd be doing the wild thing. You do have a way with words, Mags. And by the way, Jen is smiling. She doesn't seem to be minding a bit. Do you think she's finally over Zack? I suspect she is, but I don't think it's because of Grady. Then who? Mitch! Her friend studied her closely. I can tell by the look on your face that's not a good thing. I'm not so sure about the look on my face, but no one would be happier than me if Jen found love again. As long as it's someone besides Mitch. I didn't say that, Taylor protested, page 235. You didn't have to. Has anyone ever told you everything you're thinking is written all over your face? I don't know, but even if you're right, there are two reasons why it won't work. Lay them on me. Number one, I would never do anything to undermine my sister's happiness. I was afraid she was destined to be alone, and I'm glad she's not. Even if that means you are, Maggie asked pointedly. Taylor shrugged. I've got my business, thanks to Mitch, and I've got enough bookings for the year to actually make a profit, and most of the rodeo board directors have said they're going to come back again. Repeat business is the key to success. I won't even go to where you sidestepped my actual question. What's the number two reason why I'm being with Mitch won't work for you. Briefly, Taylor considered avoiding that question, but she learned something about redheads. The red hair was traditionally an indicator of ferocious temper, which Maggie had. This is page 236. What was a relatively unknown was the notorious redheaded persistence. She knew that Maggie Benson wouldn't let it drop. In fact, it was highly unlikely that she would bring it up at the most embarrassing moment possible. If you must know, Taylor said, he rejected me once ten years ago because he was in love with my sister. And ten years ago she eloped with Zach Adams. Fight for him! It's not particularly smart to fight a losing battle. I just found out he's still in love with her. Maggie touched her arm. Oh, Taylor, don't, she said, holding up a hand. If you're nice to me, I'll cry and I may not be able to stop. Jin's hand... Jin's had enough unhappiness in her life. If she's happy now, I'm happy for her. A sudden crackling sound filled the night air, but it cut in and out. Maggie shook her head in disgust. This rodeo has gone off without a hitch, except for Cal White's close call and that lousy PA system. I haven't been able to understand most of what comes over it. Folks, break. Mitch was making announcement. Page 237. Taylor begrudged the fact that she knew it was him beside it the fact that it was only two discernible words. Bull riding, pro, demonstration, center arena, with me. Taylor tensed, her stomach nodding with fear. Did you understand any of that? She asked her friend. Maggie shrugged. Sounded like Mitch is planning to demonstrate professional bull riding. That's what I thought, too. And I'm guessing that he'll do that. He'll get on one to do that, Taylor said grimly. Yeah, the other woman folded her arms over her chest. 
Damn it, Taylor's heart pounded painfully in her chest. I have to talk to that stubborn, stupid, crazy fool, she said. Don't hurt him, Taylor. When I get through with him, he'll wish he'd taken that chance with that bull. Maggie grinned. I'll see you later. Taylor hurried past the concession around the crowd, dim the lights, were a blur as she focused on one thing, getting to Mitch, to stop him from taking on a ton of trouble. Was that man completely insane, or was she insanely jealous? Page 238. Had he seen Jen and Grady sitting together in the bleachers? Was history repeating itself? Was his nose out of joint as it had been ten years ago? This time he'd be taking the chance of doing more damage to his already injured leg, possibly losing it, already weakened. It would be even more difficult for him to ride a bull, not to mention the fact that he hadn't competed for years. He was out of practice. Taylor hadn't been able to leave him alone ten years ago because she was frightened for him. Deja vu all over again. Now she was terrified for the man she loved. I'm going to leave you hanging with who did Mitch wind up with? Most importantly, did Taylor tell him how she felt or did she duck it? Very good book. And it goes to show you that sometimes second chances do happen. With that being said, I'm going to go work out. So, God bless. Hope everyone's doing well. Wash your hands and uh, social distance, all that good stuff. I'm not going to say too much politically tonight because I'm wore out. That's why I'm taking the time out from Facebook. It seems like everybody wants to argue their point. I feel like I've argued my point. And if you watch the CDC, if you watch what Dr. Uh, I can't say his name. Fuchi Fowey, it starts with an F, says it's too soon to open up. I highly agree. And I think we're going to see more damage done than repair to our country. And Trump's already announced he's not going to close it down if it happens again. So I'm scared for our country. And you should be too. You shouldn't be taking willy-nilly chances out there with no mask on. You shouldn't be going to these wild parties or gas, gas, mass gatherings of more than 10 people. You're just tempting fate. Not only with the, your life, but the lives of others. And they're going out and affecting everybody else. It's a pattern. We've got to learn. We've got... To, I know Trump's not being a good leader. Okay, I'm just going to say that. Okay, I'm now riled up. Trump's not a good leader. I'm calling him out. If he was a good leader, he would have not turned this over to the governors in the first place. He would have went ahead, put all that on his shoulders, and went ahead and said, you know what? I got this. I'm the leader, and I'm going to show you how to lead. Lead by example. Not give that duty off to somebody else. Because once you give that duty off to somebody else, really your voice is mute. You have no say-so. You can voice your opinion, yes, but what you say shouldn't matter because you handed that power over. Do you see what I'm saying? And it, it's not to the state representatives who feel like they have the power. It was to the governor. And that's final. That's all I'm going to say. I don't think I gave this a book rating, so I'm going to go back to that. That's a 20. 20, 20, 20. That makes it a must read. And you'll see why at the end of the book. God bless. See you again soon.